Multilingual Latina Tutorials with Mr. K. Pensum D. This video is meant to accompany the uh, Latina Disco or the Lingua Latina College Companion Text available from Focus Bookstore. I'm going to get right into the text here. I'm going to point out the new features in Chapter 8. So starting with line 3, you see that we have uh, Qui tabernam habit tabernarius est. So qui is what we call a relative pronoun. Remember there are only eight parts of speech, pronouns are one of them, and uh, the pronouns are broken down into different categories. Relative pronouns are pronouns that relate back to something else in the text. This relative pronoun though doesn't really have anything in front of it because it's the first word. So when you have a pronoun like this, it's not a question. Qui tabernum habit, literally it says who has a shop, is a shopkeeper, uh, we want to add the antecedent. We want to add the thing that comes before the qui. And it's assumed that it's going to be, and shows you in the margin, is qui. Uh, the person who, or he, who has a shop, is a shopkeeper. So keep that in mind as you translate to make sure that you uh, make nice, clear uh, antecedents for your quis. Uh, then the next feature I want to point out is line in line 11, and that is this sentence, Multae feminae quae in haquia ambulant ante tabernam ambi albini consistunt, uh, etc. So we have many women who walk on this street stop in front of Albinus's shop. Uh, I wanted to point out the hawk here. Uh, this is another form of pronoun, but this time instead of a relative pronoun relating back to something, it is a pronoun that points out. It, it is called demonstrative, from demonstrat, to point out. So in this street, it's as if you're pointing to this street. In this chapter you also see ille, another demonstrative pronoun which means that. Hick, or hawk here in this form, is related to the, um, the adverb hik here. And ille, that one, is related to the adverb illik, there. So if you're saying that something is right here, that you're pointing at this thing that you're pointing out right in front of you, in haquia, in this street, you're using the demonstrative pronoun hawk. At the end of this chapter, it explain, uh, Orberg explains how to decline hawk. And um, so you'll need to memorize that declension just like for qui. And this is, there's a lot of memorization in this chapter as far as that goes. So like hawk, if you're using the English uh, American uh, order of cases, then it would be hick, huyas, huik, hunk, hok. But here for the feminine, it'd be hike, huyas, huik, hunk, hawk. And then hi, harum, he's, hak, has, he's. So you need to memorize those, um, those forms because there's a masculine, feminine, and neuter form for hick, hike, hawk, just like for qui, qui, quad above. And then for ille, ela, elud, which you'll find a little bit later in this chapter. So the next feature I want to point out is in line, the same line here where we have nam femina ornamentis delectantur, for the women are pleased by the jewelry. This is an ablative here, all by itself. Right? There's nothing, there's no preposition before this ablative telling you that it's going to be an ablative. Uh, and so when we have these kinds of ablatives, they have special names. This one is called the ablative of instrument or ablative of means. Uh, so it's with, you know, what the thing um, by which they're delighted. The, the, the thing with which the person is delighted or the thing that is used to delight. For the women are delighted by, we use the preposition here, by or with. They're delighted with jewelry or delighted by, by jewelry. You just need to remember that special name of ablative of, uh, of means or ablative of instrument. Then we have another feature in line 41. Oh, went too far. Bottom of this page. So if you go to line 41, you see Lydia says, Consiste mede aspica illam tabernam. And here is that uh, other demonstrative that I, point, I mentioned earlier, ille, which is pointing to something else away from you, not right in front of you, not this one, but that one, that one there. She says, look at that shop, Lydia says to Medus, look at that shop. And um, 
Ile, Ila Ilud also has a little bit of regular declension that you have to memorize. Ile. The Ila, the feminine form, is Ila, Ilias, Ili, Ilam, Ila, etc. So you'll need to memorize that at the end of this chapter. And just know that it is called the demonstrative pronoun. It's one of the demonstratives. So uh, I also have line 42 to show you. O quam pulcra sunt illa ornamenta. Oh, how beautiful are those pieces of jewelry. And here we have a different form of quam. It looks like the qui, qui quad, we saw earlier, but it's used in um, an expression of a strong emotion, like, oh, how beautiful. And here it's just adverbial. We translate it, how beautiful it is. Okay, go to line 46 for the next feature I want to point out. And we have, uh, in linea ante oculos lidiae tenet, Albinus Lydiae, Lydiae Margaritas Ostendit. So Albi Albinus shows the pearls to Lydia. Here we have uh, Lydiae, which is, and you see in the margin, the dative case. It's dative because something is being shown to her. It's called our indirect object. Albinus shows these things to Lydia. To or for her, when we translate it like that, is our dative uh, case function or one of our dative case functions. Uh, line 52, you see uh, Albinus uh, shows three rings uh, to uh, them without gems, three rings without gems. So um, what I want to point out here is the form of aspike. That shows in here, aspicete hos anulos. Look at these rings. Aspike and um, you later you're going to see another verb, akip, akipe, akipio, are called i-stem verbs. And what's different about these verbs is they belong in the third conjugation, so the ura verbs, ere, -E, short ere -E verbs. Um, but they have an i in front of their, uh, their command, their imperative, plural, aspicite. And they also have an i in front of the third person plural, so aspiciunt. Uh, so instead of um, winkara, which means to conquer, which would be winkunt here, and wink, it would be winkata here, but winkiunt is not the way they would do it for winkara. So these are special verbs, just you have to memorize, and in the margins or at the end you'll see that they have, he has them, Orberg marks them out separately to show that they have this I here, and also in the first person this would be aspicio in the first person. In line 57... We have quota numis constat analus in the quo gamma est. How many? How much does it cost, or how many coins does it cost? A ring in which there is a gem. So how much does a ring with a gem cost? This form numis is called the ablative of price. When you have cave verbs or verbs of cost, uh, which are constat and istimat, uh, he values it at, or wend it, he sells, or em it, he buys. That, those are um, called the cave cost verbs, and they take the ablative of price. And um, in line 59, we have the same form. For numis here, we have uh, the ablative of price. How much does a ring with a uh, cost 100, or this ring costs 100 coins? In line 64, we have tanta gamma sola octaginta sesterti is constat. Such a uh, such a ring only costs eighty sesterti i. And um, that form of tanta we see means tom magnus so great. Uh, so such a great gem alone, so great a gem or so large a gem all by itself costs this much. In line seventy two. We see quantum, which is similar to tantum, except it means quam magnus, how large, how big, how big is the price, or how great is the price of that ring, ilius anulum. In line 75, pretium ilius anuli, the price of that ring is tantum est quantum huius, is as great as this one. 
So tantum est quantum means uh, tam magnus quam, is as great as. Final couple of features in 108. We see Akkepe numos non aginta nulos. Akkepe is another one of those I stem verbs. So Akkepe, although the infinitive is Akkipara, to accept. The first person is Akkipio, and the third person plural is Akkipiunt. So this little I shows up in the first person and the third person plural. First person singular and the third person plural. Last feature in line 130. We have uh, Lydia quae Romae habitat medo via monstrat. So Lydia shows the way to medus. And medus is in the dative case here. Again, the same reason we had before with ostendit. She shows to him. She shows the road to medus, to or for medus, dative indirect object. Okay, you're ready to go try the exercises now for pensum D.